Hello, today I have another comparison video for you. Today I will take a look at the image quality of the Panasonic G7 and GX80 versus the Panasonic G9. Why comparing these cameras? Well, I have been using the Panasonic G7 and GX80 for over 3 years now and taking a lot of photos and videos I still like today. But ever since I got the Panasonic G9 uh, about one year ago, I always wondered how my older cameras hold up against the newer G9. I still want to use the older cameras for time lapses or for B cams for video. So my question was if the G7 and GX80 deliver good enough image quality to keep using them alongside the G9. In the first part of this video we will take a look at stills image quality in terms of sharpness, dynamic range and noise performance. And in the second part of this video I will compare the video quality. Now let's get started. As I explained in my GX80 vs G7 video, both uh, cameras have a 16 megapixel sensor but the GX80 has no low pass filter. So it should produce a bit sharper images than the G7. If we look at the images at 1 to 1 pixel ratio, you can see that the GX80 on the right side has more details in the textures of the stones in the windows and you can also see it in the inscription down here in the tombstone. I don't know if you can see this with the YouTube compression, but at 1 to 1 pixel ratio you can notice the difference. When we compare the images of the G9 on the left and the GX80 on the right, also at 1 to 1 pixel ratio, you almost see no difference at all. Maybe there is a slight advantage on the G9, but uh, it is not as big as the advantage of the GX80 versus the G7. Note that the image of the G9 looks a bit more zoomed in than on the GX80. That is because Lightroom has to zoom in the 20 megapixel image of the G9 more than the 16 megapixel image of the GX80 to get to a 1 to 1 zoom ratio. What this means is that if you, if you would reduce the G9 image to 16 megapixel, it should look sharper than the GX80 image and also you would have an advantage with the 20 megapixel of the G9 when you want to print uh, in larger formats. So to sum this up, uh, sharpness improves from the G7 to the GX80 and also a little bit to the G9. But you have to do some extreme pixel peeping to notice the differences. When you use your images on social media, you couldn't tell the difference between these cameras. For the dynamic range test, I took this image against the sun, which is in the left upper corner of the screen, behind clouds. So you have quite some dynamic range in this image. And as you can see in the histogram, we don't have clipped highlights, but we have some clipped shadows in the lower left corner of the image. And this is almost the same in all three photos. This is the G7 and this is the GX80. If I push down the highlight slider, you can see there are details left in the clouds and so are in the G7 image and also in the image of the G9. And if we compare the images side by side, apart from the slight difference in the field of view because I accidentally changed the zooming on the G7 and GX80 shot, the dynamic range looks pretty much the same. Maybe the G9 has slightly more dynamic range because of the wider field of view I shot the G9 image. We have some brighter clouds up here and they are still not blown out in the histogram. So the G9 has a bit more dynamic range, but it is not more than a half stop over the G7 or the GX80. Now let's take a look at noise performance. As with sharpness and dynamic range, you can't expect big improvements with the G9 over the other two cameras, but let's take a look at some samples. 
I shot these samples at 1600 and 3200 ISO, uh, each camera at the same settings. And for this comparison I did not apply any noise reduction in Lightroom, so I turned the detail tab completely off, as uh, Lightroom by default adds some color noise reduction and some slight sharpening to imported images already. First let's compare G9 and G7 at 1600 ISO and when you look at the darker areas you can clearly see the color noise and I think the G9 looks a bit better than the G7 and also has more details left as you can see here in the street sign. At 3200 ISO when we zoom in to 100% you can see a lot of color noise uh, but still the G9 holds up better than the G7 when you look at the details like this sign here. When we compare the G9 to the GX80, I think the GX80 does a bit better than the G7. The noise of both G9 and GX80 look quite comparable. Uh, you still have some more details left of in the G9 image but that is also because of the higher resolution and at 3200 ISO I think the noise looks pretty comparable maybe with a slight advantage to the G9 uh, you still have some more details left on the G9's image and overall maybe a tiny bit less noise visible than in the GX80 images one note on noise reduction in Lightroom. Uh, Lightroom already applies some slight sharpening and color noise reduction when importing images. So when I activate this tab, you can see the color noise goes away completely and there's still some luminance noise left. Uh, we can reduce this by masking our sharpening to adjust the fine details and also add some slight noise reduction to the image. And zoomed out, the image looks very usable. So as I said in the beginning of this video, I wanted to know how the G7 and GX80 do for time lapses in comparison to the G9. And I think my tests showed they perform quite well. Even in low light they are usable when you apply some noise reduction and when the images are scaled down to 4K resolution. Here is the sample from the low light test with some noise reduction and scaled down to 4K from the G7, the GX80 and the G9. Now let's take a look at video quality. To save time I left out the G7 for this comparison because it has uh, almost the same uh, codecs and video quality as the GX80. I start with the comparison of the 4K video. On the left side we have the GX80 with 100 megabits per second and on the right side we have the G9 with 150 megabits per second in 10-bit. In 8-bit the G9 also records in 100 megabits per second. The GX80 produces a good 4K image, but as you can see in the details in the trees and bushes in the middle of the image or the details in the houses, the image of the G9 is quite a bit sharper than the image of the GX80. Please note that you only have small objects in this image and it is quite a challenging test for the cameras. Uh, when looking at these more realistic samples uh, where the objects are closer to the camera, you can clearly see that the GX80 produces a good 4K image. When we look at image quality in Full HD, the G9 performs much better than the GX80 and that is because of the codec. The GX80 records in 20 megabits per second up to 30p and 28 megabits per second in 60p. The G9 records in 100 megabits per second up to 60p and it records at this bit rate in 8-bit and in 10-bit codecs. If you want slow motion on the GX80, you only have the option to record in Full HD in 60 fps at 28 megabits per second. Let's compare this to the G9's Full HD 60 fps 
at 100 megabits per second. As you can see in the image at 60p in Full HD, the image of the GX80 gets quite soft and mushy, whereas the G9 still has a lot of details. Also in this image you can see the dynamic range of these cameras where the clouds in the GX80 are partly blown out. The G9 has a nice roll off in the highlights and there are no blown out clouds in the sky. So the G9 has a much better uh, dynamic range in HLG and in CineD and also in Vlog L. Last but not least, let's take a look at how these cameras perform in low light. The samples are recorded in 4K and at 1600 ISO the GX80 already loses a lot of detail and the image gets mushy and the highlights are easily blown out, whereas the G9 image, uh, apart from the appearing of some noise, the image retains very good detail and also the highlights in the lamps you can see are not as blown out as with the GX80. At 3200 ISO the GX80 gets even worse but the G9 retains details in the image. Of course the image gets much noisier but with some noise reduction added in post the image is still very usable. To summarize this comparison, for stills the G7, GX80 and G9 are not far apart. The GX80 is a bit better than the G7 and the G9 is a bit ahead of the GX80. In the video department the situation is different. The G9 has no crop in 4K, has much better video codecs, especially in Full HD it is much sharper, and it has better color profiles like HRG and Vlog L that provide more dynamic range and better noise performance. Although the G9 is much better in video, you can totally use the G7 and GX80 in the 4K video modes and when you have good uh, light in daylight or when you light your scenes when you have low light situations. So that's it for today. I hope you found this comparison useful. If you have any comments or questions then please leave them down below. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, then hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!